All right, friends and family, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Every Day is a Saturday with your host, me, myself, and I, Brian Roof. Hey, guys, I just want to start off by thanking you guys all for taking the time to watch or listen to the show. I really appreciate it. Um, I definitely have seen a spike in the listens on the audio side and also doing really pretty good on the YouTube side, gaining a couple of subscribers, you know, every day or so, so... I really appreciate it, guys. And uh, if you hadn't had the chance to go check me out on either either side of the platform, on uh, audio side, you can catch me on like um, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, basically all the podcast platforms. And if you hadn't had the chance, I'm also on the YouTube side. Please go over there, subscribe, like all those good things. I could appreciate it. It will really uh, help out the show. If I could even talk today, <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys, uh, especially all my guests that have been on the show as well. You guys have totally made uh, the show what it is. I, uh, I'm sure people get bored of just listening to my stories. So, um, you know, I really appreciate all the guests that have come on. And I thank you guys for taking your time for sharing your stories. Also, I'm also looking for a uh, future guest. So if you want to come on and tell your story, I would really appreciate it. In particular, I would really love to have a, a lady on, a female veteran. Um, it would be awesome. Uh, all I've had basically at this point in time is a whole bunch of guys. So if you're a lady out there and you served and you would like to come on and tell your stories and your experiences, please don't be shy. Come on in. We would love to hear from you. So, all right, guys. Today's episode is ep episode 17. It's uh, time and service, my memor memorabilia, Ugh. cannot talk today, I'm telling you, uh, from 2000 to 2004, I'm going to share uh, some really cool things that I've kept throughout the years uh, when I served. Um, I came, you know, I had stuff from boot camp, I got stuff while I was over in the Middle East, so I really kind of wanted to share it all with you guys, uh, especially since I've kind of gone through the whole story, so... Um, if you're really interested in, in seeing some cool things, you know, especially on the Marine Corps side, uh, I got stuff I really am looking forward to sharing with you guys. So let's go ahead and get ready to take a trip down memory lane again. Maybe not. Hey, uh, all right, guys. Let's go ahead and get into today's show, episode 17. I'm going to show you guys some of my mem memorabilia. Gosh, I probably should have picked a different word that I could actually say. <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys some pretty cool things. So uh, buckle up. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right. So one of the first things I'm going to show you guys, I'm sure most of you guys have seen these before. I mean, I know they have switched it up, but these were my original issued camis right here as you can see all right and when you first get these camis right on this front side right here you don't have u.s marines and you don't have an eagle globe and anchor all right um that's something that you got to earn and then once you're done back in the day this is how they used to do it that iron on patches these were iron-on patches. A little bit. It's hard to probably get the actual reading, but sorry about uh, not being able to get it in there right. But anyways, that's basically an iron-on patch that we used to have to do uh, before they actually issued out these which we call these digitals. Uh, let me see if I can get this over here. All right. Boom. Now, I understand if you're probably listening to this, it's probably not going to be as uh, good of a show for you because you're, you're going to have to be able to see some of these things to actual probably get a, any kind of satisfaction out of it. And I know there's a lot of pausing in between. And then... When I deployed over into the Middle East, these are what we wore over there. And 
I don't think uh, on these ones I ever ironed on a, uh, a patch, but we were supposed to have iron-ons on those. All right. So that was uh, basically the uniforms. Here's uh, the boonie covers that we were wearing over there in the Middle East. Good old, old garrison cover. And she's all... We used to have to starch the hell out of our camis, and we even starched our covers, and that's why, I mean, this thing's still... She's still nice and crisp. And the digi cover. These were... uh already you know they already had the patches on them and stuff like that um with the digitals uh you didn't have to you know press your digis or anything like that back you know when i first started in 2000 um we had the garrison stuff man we had to sit there and iron our camis if not you took them to the cleaners you know every friday you know you took in a couple sets uh dropped them off friday pick them up sunday when you go get your hair cut go pick up camis go back to work or whatnot and then um but if not man you were back at the room with an iron just in there you know we also had to uh spit shine our boots you know i don't think there's any spit shining any boots anymore because uh the boots that any, you guys end up getting are non-shine boots so uh lucky for you guys we had to spend a lot of our time you know pressing our camis keeping ourselves uh you know, all nice and tight and all that stuff. So, uh, all right, a couple other things from boot camp. We uh, get Bibles. These are the only Bibles. You, this is basically the only thing you could kind of carry, you know, in your little personal effects bag. You know, it's crazy. I, I, I thought this was even crazy that I had this. But this right here is my recruiter's business card. I can't believe I still <laughs> have his business card. Good word, Edward Burke, staff sergeant out of uh, Lancaster, California. So, my gosh, that is, that's too funny. So, while we're in boot camp, I'll go through a lot of the boot camp stuff that I had. All right. It's in, insignificant to most, but this is pretty funny. These are the little uh, Skillcraft U.S. government issued pens that we had in uh, in uh, boot camp ink sticks. What? This one was the uniform guide basically tells you how you're supposed to wear all your medals and stuff like that so whenever uh you know there's a ball or you're up for some kind of a promotion board or whenever you got to wear you're supposed to wear your uniform you need to make sure that everything's correct because there is a certain way that everything is supposed to be worn and there's you know certain uh you know inches and every little spot you know spaces it's supposed to be left so uh, this book is pretty instrumental when you have important things to get ready for. Because the last thing you want to do is be out of out of place or something and someone calls you out. I tell you that. All right. This was a big time, huge book that we carried around with us a lot. Um, a lot of you guys may know this as our knowledge and uh got the good old boot band she's about worn out <laughs> but um my gosh these pages are old the good old commandant statement on core values of the united states marines it's crazy and it's you know what's hilarious in the back of it is uh basically my sheet of like marking off of when i'm getting out of boot camp <laughs> uh it's like it's like being in jail man you're just like on the little countdown like all right when am i getting out that's great 
but uh this this thing had just about everything um you know believe it or not there was a lot of tests and stuff like that that we had to take during boot camp um you know knowing like the rank structure not only for the marine corps but we had to know it for like the navy and uh other branches a lot of stuff that we had to remember and uh being screamed at it all at the same time all right this right here it's the eagle globe and anchor and it is one that is given to you when and I, this at least this is when you know all this stuff that i'm sharing with you guys was you know time frame is uh 2000 to 2004 so uh some of this stuff doesn't look familiar to you maybe yeah it wasn't around during your time maybe they changed it up i'm not sure but uh right here when you got done with the crucible march your ass all the way up there you know and, and and they uh at that point in time hand this over to you and that's at the point in time you actually become a marine and you you know for the very first time you're allowed to call yourself a marine because uh you know up to this point when you're in boot camp you talk in third person uh which is like this recruit request permission to talk to a drill instructor uh, you know so uh, at this point in time, once you earn that, man, you're, you're a Marine. And, and like I said, then it's time you get to do the iron-on patches. And when you go back to good old uh, Camp Pendleton, you were you know, a Marine, and everybody had to treat you as such. So it was awesome. All right, so this cover right here, she's uh, – man, I mean, a lot of this stuff has – I've moved quite a bit throughout my life, so – for me to have some of this stuff in, in the in the condition that it's in, I am actually shocked. Just goes to show you I cared a lot about my Marine Corps stuff. All right. This right here is our uh, rifle book. It, it would, basically, when we were shooting, it's our data book. It also gave us tips and tricks on how to use it. And uh, when I was going through um, boot camp, our weapon of choice was the M16A2 service rifle. So, yeah, man, I can't believe I got this thing. So, it's got some of my old uh, groupings in there. Look at that. Look at that. Bra, bra, bra. Oh, I'm over here. Bra. Nice. Some good, some good groupings right there. Some more shots. Kind of numbered them one, two, three, four, five. Because you know, when on the range, they, they, they pop it up and it shows where your shot is. So pretty cool. I was a, uh, expert all four years. So pretty proud of myself there. Never got that pizza box. <sighs> it's a book they gave us a rifleman Dodd. As I told you guys, we all had a number in boot camp. I was number 36. I was good about that. I um, I wasn't 100% sure, but yep, I was 36. What else did I got? So, oh, let's see. My boot camp stuff. Mm. All right. So, some of you guys had seen a uh, previous uh, episode. This right here is my um, orders to the Middle East. I won't show it too close. It's got some uh, my social and stuff on there, so I don't really want to show that. <laughs> um, then I got all my promotions. Uh, this one in particular is when I picked up Corporal. Um, what else do I have here? This one is when I actually picked up Sergeant. So when I was on inactive um, reserve, I got this letter in the mail, and uh, they they gave me sergeant, and I was like, hell yeah! So I uh, was proud of that, but they, that wasn't uh, any way to get me back. This was my uh, promotion to lance corporal. Uh, this one actually, oh she, this is my. Uh, I guess I was in the delayed entry program for a little bit, but uh, my delayed entry certificate. Um, let's see. This is a uh, Marine combat training certificate. So, uh, as a support, uh, units, we go through the Marine combat training, which is a condensed 
uh, version of uh, SOI, also known as School of Infantry, where the actual guys who are considered grunts go to and uh, train. They give us a, a pretty quick and uh, down and dirty of all that stuff. So um, let's see. All right, lastly, and I, I mean, I do got quite a bit, but I, I'm not going to go too crazy with uh, everything because I don't know if I could show all my stuff. So, um, But anyways, this right here is a uh, British, British soldier. We uh, traded out some stuff. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I got quite a bit of uh, different stuff from different uh, groups. That was over there when I was in the Middle East, obviously. And this is um, an Iraqi helmet that uh, I brought back as a little bit of a souvenir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, something in the Marine Corps, they're, you know, really big time on uh, coins and stuff like that. Um, I didn't collect a lot of them, but uh, this one was from uh, MEF headquarters group. Uh, pretty cool looking coin. I know that I can't, you guys aren't really probably seeing it very well. Try to hold it up like that. It's pretty cool detail. It's got some weight on it. I think it's pretty cool. But that's, uh, oh, shoot, hold up, hold up, hold up. Crazy enough, too, I had uh, kept a couple letters that uh, we had received while we were over in the Middle East. This one, I guess, was uh, written around Valentine's Day. So I'm going to go ahead and read this thing out. It's pretty cool. I It would be funny to... Uh, Geez, this was probably like 20 years ago. So this person's definitely uh, in college, beyond college or something by now. Uh, but it says, uh, ha Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for serving our country. God bless America. Thanks for our freedom. Please write back if you have time. And it was from uh, Tessa Fox. How cool was that? I got a couple of these things. Um let me see if I can find another one real quick. Oh, uh, yeah. Here we go. And they all must have did this around the um, uh, Valentine's Day because this one again says, Hi, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm not going to read this whole one. This one's pretty long, but these are all little letters that we had gotten over there in the Middle East. Uh, they're all from like little, you know, school kids and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's called Troop Fan Mail. Um, it was done by www.troopfanmail.net. And uh, these were really cool to get. I remember um, getting these and they would kind of disperse them out amongst all of us and uh, we all would get them. And uh, it was really cool to, you know, see that there was all these kids out there cheering us on and stuff like that and you know it we did try our our darndest to uh write everyone back that we could obviously um we were kind of crunched against time once kind of once we ended up receiving a lot of the this mail and stuff it was probably well beyond its time um and we were right in the midst of everything because uh it did take a long time for us to receive things over there in the middle east but um you know, I really appreciate if, you know, if you were one of those kids back then writing us letters, I, I really appreciate you guys. And I know uh, everyone else appreciated it, too. It definitely put smiles on a lot of uh, the troops faces and stuff like that, because that was a, kind of a fun thing. I mean, and there was a lot of it. So they dispersed it against all, you know, all the different units and companies and uh, really cool thing to see that, you know, uh, Americans getting behind them, you know, their their fellow countrymen over there fighting the battle. So thank you guys so much. Um, but anyways, guys, this one is is not a very long uh, episode. Um, I thought it would just kind of be fun to kind of run through all the things that I have kind of collected or have kept 
uh, during my time when I served. Um, and once again, um, I am extremely proud to be a Marine. And um, I'm, a, you know, especially proud since I've started this podcast and I've been reaching out and talking to, you know, so many different awesome people that out there that um, are real true heroes. You know, everybody has their different heroes out there. Some some have their heroes in capes. Some have them uh, that are their athletes. You know, uh, mine in particular are the ones over there that put on the uniform and go fight and put their life on out for our country. Um, I'm I'm extremely you know appreciative, especially as a fellow veteran, as also as someone who has deployed into a foreign country. I have nothing but respect and love and. and and pride in in uh being a marine and like i said i'm surrounded by heroes all the time every every one of you that i talk to you guys are absolute heroes uh, and i know that's one thing about you know marines or any you know veteran in general uh they're very modest and uh you know they're not gonna you know tell you they're a hero but i could assure you some of these guys that i've talked to it actually all of the guys I've talked to are absolute heroes. Anybody that puts on that uniform and goes and swears to, you know, to hold, uphold the constitution and go fight for this country. You know, there's nothing but absolute admiration and respect for you. It takes, you know, one hell of a person to do that. And, um, you know, for all of you that are active and, and you're still out there fighting the fight, Hey, keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about the trolls out there and, and people that may try to pull you down or, or put you down. Um, you keep fighting the good fight because we need people like you out there to keep this country free and um, withhold some of the core values that uh, were founded by some really great people. So once again, I want to thank each and every one of uh, my viewers out there, subscribers, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Without you guys, this show would not continue to go in the path that it's going. Um, like I said, there's going to be some really great um, upcoming guests. I'm super excited for uh, some of the guests that I have on. Uh, one of them, he's a, a author uh, to a book. He's you know a army veteran. He's been to you know in the war combat zone, and now he's a huge advocate in the uh, veteran community so i'm extremely excited uh for that he's going to be dropping on wednesday uh what's that april 5th and so make sure you guys are st staying in tune and watch that episode i'm not going to give up any other information because i really want you guys to uh tune in to uh see who it is but once again thank you guys for watching every day is a saturday or listening to it Thank you again and have a great day. God bless.